The DuPont Cavalcade of America. Tonight, the DuPont Company brings you Powhatan's Daughter, starring Joan Caulfield on the Cavalcade of America. But first, here's Bill Hamilton of the DuPont Company. Good evening. Many of us receive ski clothes, outdoor jackets, or children's snowsuits this Christmas. Zeland tags on garments such as these mean that the fabric in the garments has been treated with DuPont Zeland Durable Water Repellent. Zeland protection, unlike that of ordinary water repellents, lasts through many washings or cleanings. For sportswear, for rainwear, for durable weather protection, when you shop, look for clothes that carry the Zeland tag. Zeland Durable Water Repellent is one of the DuPont Company's better things for better living through chemistry. Now, Powhatan's Daughter, starring Joan Caulfield on the Cavalcade of America. In a crude longhouse, dark except for a leaping fire in the middle, a mighty Indian chieftain sits in splendor among his warriors, his wives, and his children. Beyond the fire stands the prisoner, a white man wearing the doublet and high boots of the Virginia colonists. Is there no mercy in your heart, Chief Powhatan? For a white man who sees my land, none. Those clubs your warriors are holding make the manner of my death all too plain. I take it they're going to beat out my brains. Bring prisoner to the block. Yes, great Powhatan. With what relish your people view the prospect of seeing my head crushed. Even the women. Silence, prisoner. Kneel before block. Place your head upon it. When drums stop beating, warriors will strike. No, no, Father, don't let them do it. Spare his life. Matoka, go back from prisoner. No, I do not wish him to die. Daughter, return to your place among the women. It is a custom with us that a woman can claim a prisoner's life. I am a woman. You are child. You always say I am your favorite daughter. This is true. I have not asked many favors. I ask this now. No, it cannot be. Then I place my head upon his. Now their blows must break my skull first. Matoka! I will not move, Father. Tell your braves to strike. Very well, my child. I have no choice. I grant your wish. Release, prisoner. Oh, great power, Tan. I thank you. And I thank you, little princess. Will you tell me your name so that I may know what to call my... my benefactress? My name is Matoaka, but they call me Pocahontas. And so in the winter of 1607, the young daughter of the Indian chief Powhatan saved the life of Captain John Smith, set him free to return to the colony of Jamestown in Virginia. In so doing, Pocahontas rendered an important service to the struggling little settlement, where Smith was one of its few capable administrators. But no one realized how vital a contribution she was yet to make to the dream that was America. For when Smith returned to the Jamestown colony... Pity the Indians did not detain you a day longer, Smith. Had you come back to Jamestown tomorrow, you would have found most of us gone. Yes, gone? Indeed. Gone where? Home, Captain Smith. Back to England. Our plans are made, Smith. We've outfitted the small boat for the voyage, and we are prepared to sail with the tide. What ridiculous nonsense is it's this? It's the only sensible thing to do. Winter is already upon us. 
We are completely without adequate food or shelter. Yeah, Archer, way. we were sent here to found a colony in the name of His Majesty King James I. To explore the lands hereabouts and to build houses and plant crops. I've had enough of this argument. To remain in Jamestown means to face starvation. I sail for England this day. All those who are of my mind, follow me now. One moment, Captain Archer. What? Captain, what? You sure sure you sure sure do you make so bold as to point your pistol at me? I and at any others among you who think to leave this colony. You dare to call yourselves Englishmen? Have you no courage? Courage will not fill our empty larders, nor our empty stomachs. Let courage fill your heart. Your stomach will not seem half so empty. No, Smith. I agree with Archer. We cannot remain here without food. Our stores are dangerously low as tis. Captain Smith! Indians! Indians? Indian attack. They've almost reached the clearing. Gentlemen, prime your guns. If we had but gone aboard the ship earlier, we'd have... Quiet, Archer. Guard, open the door. Yes, Captain Smith. How large is their number? Twenty. Perhaps thirty. When they reach the clearing, give the signal. Then we fire. They're at the clearing now. Open the door wider. Gentlemen, they came. Hold. Hold your fire. They carry no weapons. No they weapons. weapons? They bear great baskets of food. <laughs> and they're led by a mere girl. A girl, you say? See for yourself, sir. <sighs> Gentlemen, lay your guns aside. It's Pocahontas. Princess, ever since the first time you came to us with food and provisions, I've wondered why you do it. Your people have nothing, Captain Smith. Mine have more than they need. And so every week you have brought us corn, deer, and turkey. Pocahontas, without you, this winter might well have been our last. You alone have kept our men from sailing home, defeated. I wish to see you remain here and prosper. But does your father, the great Powhatan, share that wish? I do not think so. But I will speak with him. All oh, the words of a woman carry little weight in such matters. Yet I will speak with Powhatan. For sake of friendship, I bear you and your people. Thank you, my princess. I foretell that one day you will be a great woman. Am I not already a woman? You're yet but a child, Pocahontas. But one day you'll reach the full bloom of womanhood. And then you'll meet a man, a, a leader... Who shares your courage and your vision. A man such as you, Captain Smith? Younger than I, my child. And more worthy. And I hope he'll see the greatness of this land. Even as you and I do. She's done it. Oh. What's that, Smith? Pocahontas has persuaded her father to talk peace with us. Peace. Oh. Peace. Food is on its way to be served to us here. And at length, Powhatan himself will arrive. That's splendid news, Captain Smith. Why splendid? So that we may remain in this accursed land, huddling about open campfires like this every night? Archer, do you not see what this means? If Powhatan stands ready to extend the hand of friendship toward us, we can abandon these warlike expeditions. We can direct all our energies toward developing the colony, investigating its resources... To it, its gold mines. Captain Archer, I have said many times I am convinced there are no gold mines in this territory. <laughs> But the land itself, man, is gold. The opportunities on every hand are golden in their prospects. If we have but the heart and the will. I wonder what costume would be appropriate for receiving an Indian emperor. <laughs> Dignity and wisdom, Captain Archer. I doubt if your wardrobe includes either. I bid you good evening. Uh, Redcliffe, throw more wood on the fire and we freeze. Psst. Captain Smith. What? Princess, what brings you here so late at night? I come to warn you. Warn me against what? My father. He means to trick you tonight. How? The food he, he sends you is poisoned. Poison? You've done well tonight, Pocahontas. Again, we owe you our lives. Oh, if Powhatan suspect I betray him, he will have me killed. You did not betray him. You followed the promptings of your own heart. 
Yes, you feel as I do. There must be peace between red man and white. This land is large enough for both. There's freedom and fortune and happiness here for anyone who's willing to work. It is so. This great and bountiful land. Many people could live here in peace. They will one day, my princess. And now I must warn the men to be on their guard and not to eat the food. And I must go back before I am missed. Oh, take care, Captain Smith. It is your life that is in the greatest danger. I tell you, Ratcliffe, we must get rid of John Smith. He tries to make peasants and common laborers of us all. But, Archer, we must build houses and grow food. There is no one to do the work for us. Why must we have houses? If Smith were not forever in our way, we could look for gold, dig it out, and sail back to England into a life of luxury. Ah, oh, to sleep in a comfortable bed again, to eat civilized food. Yet to kill the man, Archer, I... Desperate times make desperate deeds, my friend. And if the others find out that we have murdered him... They need never know. Be made to look like an accident. An accident? Listen to me. I heard Smith say that he plans to look over our gunpowder stores this very afternoon. Long fuse, set alight at the right moment. And we should no longer be troubled by Captain John Smith. And no one would ever know it was not an accident. I tell you, we cannot fail. Ratcliffe, are you with me in this? All right. All right, we'll do it. <laughs> Huh? Who's that? Captain Smith. Pocahontas. May I come in? I must not be seen talking with you. Come in, come in, child. Oh, I look for you everywhere. What is this place? Uh, our gunpowder storehouse. Well, is anything amiss? Oh, yes. I come to warn you. Powhatan talks with chiefs of other tribes. They join together to kill all white men. Feared he would make such an attempt. Do they have many firearms? Oh, more every day, by stealing or trading and... Shh. What is it, Princess? I hear noise. What sort of noise? It was like hiss of snake. No, I do not think it is snake. It is more like... I smell fire. Fire? Captain Smith, your life is in danger. I feel it now, in this place. But my dear, oh, my... Oh, come, life. please, come. You must go out of this house. Princess, there is... <laughs> You are listening to Joan Caulfield in Powhatan's Daughter on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by the DuPont Company, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. Archer's plot to kill Captain John Smith almost succeeded. In shielding Pocahontas, Smith bore the full brunt of the explosion which was intended to take his life and was badly burned. Well, after many weeks of suffering, he determined at last to return to England for treatment. We are prepared to weigh anchor, sir. Thank you, Captain. You must leave the ship now, Pocahontas. With your going, Captain Smith, the sun will set in my heart. I do not wish to leave, but these burns I bear need the attention of skilled physicians. I ask one promise. That the friendship and love you have shown the colony will not end with my departure. But, but it will not be the same. There is no man who understands my people as you do. Only men like Archer. New men will arrive from England within the next few days. Among them, Sir Thomas Dale, who will be the new governor. He will need your help, Pocahontas. Do not withhold it. Since you ask it. I will promise. Captain Smith, will I ever look upon your face again? Do not weep, Princess. I beseech God that we may meet again. And I will learn to beseech your God, too, that he will grant you safe voyage and bring you back soon. Bless you, my Princess. And farewell. Much too long.
Gentlemen, please. if you please, this council must come to some agreement. From the day I reached this colony to become governor a year ago, we have known nothing but continued hostilities with Powhatan and other tribes. And yet the records reveal that heretofore fairly amicable relations existed between us. That was before Captain Smith left. He had great influence with Pocahontas, Powhatan's daughter. She used to bring us great stores of food. But since Smith left for England, she no longer comes here. So I have heard, Archer. Sir Thomas. Yes, John Rolfe. Sir Thomas, it would appear that some strategic act is needed to bring Powhatan to terms. You are right, Rob. Now, I have not met this daughter of Powhatan, but I presume she's dear to him. His dearest treasure. But then could we not take her captive and force Powhatan to return our men and our arms before we release her? Rolf, that is an excellent suggestion. Take charge of the venture. Captain Archer will assist you. This Indian girl may well be the key to peace. <laughs> Pardon, Princess, for calling on you without your leave. I make you welcome, Captain Archer. But why you bring many men with guns? We thought perhaps your noble father might try to prevent us from seeing you. Powhatan and his braves make visit to Potomac tribe. Excellent. That will make our task easier, eh, Ralph? Princess, we are taking you back to Jamestown with us. Oh, Powhatan, forbid me. I cannot go with you. Oh, yes, you can, Princess. No, 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 let me go. Ralph, give me a hand with this Indian wench. Release her, Archer. There is no need to treat her so. Have no fear, Princess. I will see that no harm comes to you. Thank you. You are kind. If Captain Smith were here, this man would not dare to touch me. I'm happy to say we'll never be troubled with Captain Smith again. What do you say? You have news of Captain Smith? Great news. The ship he sailed on was captured by French pirates and sent to the bottom of the sea with all hands. I, I, I do not understand. Captain Smith is dead, my pretty savage. Dead? By Captain Smith? Dead? Oh, she's fainted. Here, let me see to her. Don't bother. Now we can easily get her back to Jamestown on a litter. It will not be necessary. I will look after her and, and carry her back myself. Your Excellency, has there been word from Powhatan? No, Master Rolf. Nothing since his first message beseeching us to treat Pocahontas well and assuring us that he would meet our terms of ransom. But that was more than six months ago. Yes, and all Powhatan's done is to release a few of our men. Then Pocahontas will continue to be kept here in Jamestown? Oh, yes. Yes, of course. I uh, take it the prospect does not displease you. Your Excellency, I... I'm frank to say the prospect quite delights me. <laughs> Her presence lends dignity and sweetness to our colony, and well, Mrs. Horton tells me she's most apt at learning our language and our customs. <laughs> yes, so I hear. Ralph, I sent for you today to commend you on your experiments with tobacco plants. You are responsible for the improved quality of our tobacco shipments to England. Thank you, Sir Thomas. You're making Virginia prosperous, Master Ralph. And you have our thanks and approval in all things. And if you should find yourself thinking upon marriage with an Indian princess, you would have not only our permission, but our congratulations. Good morrow, Master Rolf. Have you come to call upon the Princess Pocahontas again? Yes, I... I have, Mrs. Horton, if I do not disturb her at her tasks. She's in her room at prayers, but she will soon come out. Will you please to wait? I'm happy to know what, that the princess has taken so quickly to our religion. She is a devout and gentle maiden. No English girl could be more so. It's a pleasure to have such a prisoner to God. Mrs. Horton, d does she ever speak to you of Captain John Smith? Oh, often, Master Rolf. And always with such warmth and affection. I see. She will probably never put him out of her heart. Here she is now. Princess, you have a caller. Good day, Princess. Welcome, Master Rolf. 
Well, I must tend now to my children. Oh, but before I go, Master Roth, will you please to set aside a supply of your new tobacco mixture for my good husband? He finds it much to his liking. With the greatest of pleasure, Mrs. Orton. Thank you very kindly. Uh, so many people speak of your fine tobacco crop, Master Roth. I shall plant ten additional acres this spring. Oh, that will be much work. Yes, it will. But work does not trouble me. Oh, your words would have found great favor with Captain Smith. Master Rolfe, you are much like him in many ways. Thank you, Princess. I know how dearly you held him. But I must speak to you of a matter that's been in my thoughts for many weeks. Since we brought you here to Jamestown, I've watched you. Nay, nay I've not been able to keep my eyes from you. Princess, I've fallen in love with you. Master Rolfe, I... I know we differ greatly in background and education. In fact, in every possible way, and yet I love you deeply. Princess, is there room in your heart for a man other than John Smith? I love John Smith as a child loves. Because he was strong and wise and fearless. I love you as a woman loves. Because you are gentle and good and loving. Oh, my princess, nothing would me, give me greater happiness than to make you my wife. Will you marry me? Yes, John, I will be your wife. I still say this wedding procession is ill-advised. The whole colony is exposed to Indian attack. Why could you not be married quietly in the stockade? Sir Thomas, I wish to be married in the white man's fashion, in the church. I think you're unduly alarmed, Sir Thomas. Pocahontas has done the colony service enough to have her wish granted. But Ralph Powhatan was informed of this wedding weeks ago. He knows his favorite daughter is to be married, and yet he has said no word. This can only mean that he is deeply angered. I tell you, that is great danger. Sir Thomas, I know my father. You have nothing to fear. Our town is treacherous. We are exposed and outnumbered. The entire colony can be wiped out. Oh, please, Sir Thomas, put your fears aside. I have faith in Pocahontas, Sir Thomas. To place the fate of our entire enterprise upon oh, the assurances oh. of a younger... What's the matter, driver? Why do you stop the carriage? Indians, Your Excellency. Just as I feared. Where are they? Ahead of us, standing between us and the church. Well, we must make a stand. Give the order to fire. No. No, Your Excellency, please. The least we can do is put up a good fight. Oh, please, sire, you must let me speak to them. Pocahontas, get back in the carriage. Oh, I must take the risk. Then I take it with you. Welcome, Father. Welcome to my wedding. There will be no wedding, Pocahontas. We come to take you home. This is my home, Father. These people are my friends. And this man beside me will soon be my husband. You will marry with your own kind, Pocahontas. You will return to your people. Or there will be war. Father, once many years ago, you granted me a favor and a man's life. I make mistake. No, Father, it was no mistake. It was an act of love and mercy. Now I ask you another favor. To show the love you bear me by loving those who have become dear to me. Mm. They have won you with false promise. They turn you against your own people, your own father. Oh, no one could turn me against you, father. No one has tried. The white men only want your friendship and goodwill. Oh, Powhatan, let there be peace and friendship between Red Man and his white brother. I love John Rolfe with all my heart. Let our marriage mark the beginning of a new happiness for everyone. My daughter... Your heart speaks to mine. It shall be as you ask. Oh, Father. I, Pohatan, make vow of peace and friendship with white man for all time. Oh, Father, you have shown the greatness of your love and your wisdom. This land is large enough for many people to live in peace and plenty. And as the white man prospers, the land will flourish and its bounty increase. And all will live here together in true brotherhood. And that which is the dream of today will be the destiny of tomorrow. Here's 
Bill Hamilton of the DuPont Company. A tremendous amount of the food America produces each year never reaches the dinner table. It is lost on the way through spoilage and waste. Estimates of the loss by the Department of Agriculture and other authorities run as high as 35% for some kinds of food. The cost is figured in the billions of dollars. American consumers pay for the loss in higher prices. And today, the hungry world outside America feels it in flatter stomachs. Staggering as are the figures on American food losses, they were much higher in the cracker barrel days of not so long ago. Then, most of the things you bought in the grocery store were sold from bulk containers. That meant dried-out foods. That meant manhandling a lot of unprotected foods. It meant stale cakes and broken crackers and cookies. Sometimes much of the profit in a food barrel was represented by crumbs and bits in its bottom. And then food producers turned to packaging. Today, most foods come in packages. They come clean and fresh. They are protected until used. New packaging materials developed or improved in the laboratories of industry are helping America save food, but the job is a long way from finished. In the case of highly perishable foods, such as fresh fruits and vegetables, annual losses from spoilage are particularly high. The produce industry is in a constant race to get food from grower to table before it spoils. It's a race against time and the relentless working of nature's chemistry. But here, too, Scientific packaging materials, plus refrigeration of produce, can play a major conservation role. Different packaging materials are required for different foods. Some must be wholly moisture-proof, some only partially so, in order that excess moisture may escape. Some foods are put in transparent packages, so shoppers can see what they are buying. Many companies make food packaging materials, metal foils, for instance, and glassine, waxed paper, and other varieties of paper, paper board, parchment, and plastic films. A DuPont entry in this field is cellophane. When the DuPont Company introduced cellophane in America in 1923, it was costly to make and sold for $2.65 a pound. Today, a far better product, moisture-proof cellophane, sells for $0.44 cents a pound, less than one-sixth as much. 21 price reductions in 24 years were made possible by steady process improvement and constantly increasing production as cellophane became one of DuPont's better things for better living through chemistry. Next week, Cavalcade presents two distinguished stars of stage and screen, Basil Rathbone and Dorothy Gish, in a gay and affectionate comedy, The Justice and the Lady... Be sure to join us next Monday night at the same time for Basil Rathbun and Dorothy Gish on the DuPont Cavalcade of America. Tonight's DuPont Cavalcade, Powhatan's Daughter, was written by Priscilla Kent. Joan Caulfield will soon be seen as the star of the Paramount picture, Sainted Sisters. Featured in tonight's play with Joan Caulfield were Ian Martin as John Smith and Lamont Johnson as John Rolfe. The music was composed by Arden Cornwell and conducted by Donald Bryan. This is Ted Pearson inviting you to listen next week to The Justice and the Lady, starring Basil Rathbun and Dorothy Gish on the Cavalcade of America, brought to you by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.